I remember being a kid in the hospital with sickle cell crisis and the doctors drawing it, drawing what a normal red blood cell looked like and what a sickle red blood cell looked like. And it didn't only teach me, it teach my parents as well. As a freelance makeup artist and hairstylist, I built, you know, my clientele and people like consistency. So when you disappear for two weeks because you're in a hospital, you lose clients a lot. And I find myself having to start over again and again and again. I always describe it as a stabbing pain. Um, it's throbbing. Sometimes it just comes at me. I've Googled <laughs> sickle cell and see how people explain um, sickle cell crisis. And I've read that it's similar to giving birth but I have done so three times and giving birth wasn't as bad. <laughs> Having sickle cell makes any stressful situation worse because strong emotions like stress cause you to go into a crisis. Um, I think an example would be the time that Hurricane Harvey hit Houston, Texas. Handling my kids that I had to put to sleep in an inflatable bed because the water was rising and I just wanted to keep them safe. And so being in pain while doing all of that is just so difficult. You don't really focus. It's hard to think clear because you think of the pain and you're just thinking of how hard it is to move. It makes it hard because I want to be there for them. I do believe that the lower awareness in the Hispanic community affects my care in all senses. I've had experiences where hospital visits or ER visits were not helpful. I went seeking for help because I was in a pain crisis, but because sickle cell disease is mostly known in the African American community, I was denied medicine or any type of care and they offered help if I needed um, help with addiction. So I went home after four hours in the ER in pain, still in pain. I have changed my opinion about sharing my story because I was almost upset that people didn't know. I was upset that nurses or doctors were denying me care. But when I looked upon myself, you know, I wasn't doing anything to change that or to help or teach people. So I decided to, to do that change. My hope for my future of my health is to be manageable. It almost amazes me when I sit back and think how easy it is for me to just walk around life with pain and nobody know. Nobody knows when I'm in pain because it's just something that happens. If there was a cure for sickle cell, and even if it's in years or I don't get to it, I know that other people will benefit from it. And they won't have to go through the things that I've gone through.